Last night, right before we got on the air, the Washington Post, Washington Post broke this story. Uh, the Post citing multiple sources saying that intelligence director Dan Coats was not only asked by the president if he could intervene with the FBI director James Comey to try to get Comey to stop the FBI investigation into Mike Flynn. Not only did Trump ask that of Dan Coats, but Dan Coats told people at the time that the president made that ask of him, that the president had made that ask of him. Now that's important because it's not just a damning allegation about the president's behavior, it's also an indication about how that might be corroborated. It's one thing to have Dan Coats and the president have different stories about what they discussed. It's another thing if at the time Dan Coats told other people about the content of that conversation. That's the way witnesses get backed up like in court and stuff. So that was last night's news in the Washington Post. Today it was news in the United States Senate. From uh, major capitals in Europe and discussing this you way. You testified to the Armed Services Committee that you were not aware of the president or White House personnel contacting anyone in the intelligence community with a request to drop the investigation into General Flynn. Yesterday, the Washington Post reported that you had been asked by the president to intervene with Director Comey to back off of the FBI's focus on General Flynn. Which one of those is accurate? Uh, Senator, I will say once again, I'm, I'm not going to get into any discussion on that in an open hearing. Both of them can't be accurate, Mr. Director. Democratic Senator Ron Wyden of Oregon doing his level best today to try to get an answer from Director of National Intelligence um, Dan Coats. There was a, a, a lot of that today. These four serving administration officials from the Justice Department and the intelligence community uh, saying they, they could not or would not answer. They just didn't feel it was appropriate to answer a lot of the senator's questions. Tomorrow, that same committee will start in again bright and early. This time, their star witness will be former FBI Director uh, James Comey. Um, we know something about what James Comey will testify to because his opening statement has been released. Um, there is now, a seems to me, a new question as to whether or not administration officials who continue to serve in the administration uh, will just refuse to answer congressional questions, whether or not they've got a legal basis uh, to refuse. Joining us now is Senator Ron Wyden, member of the Senate Intelligence Committee, one of the questioners during today's hearing. Senator Wyden, thanks very much for your time tonight. I know this is a very busy time. Thank you for having me, Rachel. And I think there's been a very important point. Those officials this morning made a mockery out of the oversight process. We have a legal obligation to do vigorous oversight. And what they basically said is, so what? And I can tell you, we are just not going to sit back and say this is acceptable. And you uh, ran the clip about my question to uh, uh, Director Coates. Uh, one of those answers is false, and I'm going to get to the bottom of it. So that was the, the important thing, I think, in, in that question that you raised there is that this is not just competing news reports or different people shading the same story differently depending on their audience. What you asked the DNI today was about his previous testimony. He testified to the Senate Armed Services Committee. So again, testifying to another oversight committee in the Senate um, saying that he wasn't aware about any White House personnel contacting anybody in the intelligence community to try to drop that Flynn investigation. Uh, the Washington Post report does directly contradict that today, and yet he wouldn't answer either way. The thing I didn't understand today, and maybe, maybe you did, is was he saying that he would answer those questions, he would clear that up in a classified session, in a closed session, he just wouldn't do it in the, in the open hearing? No, I, I don't think there was a commitment to clear it up, and that's the problem. I think that our job is to get to the bottom of these contradictory accounts, particularly when they go right to the heart of this central question, and that is, was the president putting a lot of effort into trying to restrict this investigation, and I think the evidence is just piling up that he was. We've seen Director Comey's opening statement was released um, ahead of time. Um, today so that we've all had a chance to review it before he makes those remarks and faces questions tomorrow. 
Um, if, if what Director Comey says in his opening statement is true, if the president directly urged him to drop the investigation into Mike Flynn, so that's not even, that's not Rachel, oblique. Rachel, that, yeah. that is Watergate level material. That particular point you're making about Mike Flynn, it's just that serious. In terms of if, if the president did that directly, is it just violating a, a norm of how things are generally done? Would it be illegal for the president to do that? Rachel, I'm, I'm sure the lawyers are going to dig into this, into the obstruction of justice question in particular. I, I've come to feel if it looks like a duck and it quacks like a duck, it just may be a duck. So we're just going to stay at it, and that's why tomorrow is so important. What do you think is going to happen next in terms of your committee's investigation here? We heard um, after, for example, after uh, NSA Director Mike Rogers would not answer questions today about whether or not he was pressured by the president um, to try to influence the FBI investigation. Uh, we heard the ranking Democrat on the committee, Senator Warner, talk about bringing in some other officials, other people who might be able to corroborate that story. Does that mean that we should expect further open hearings, new witnesses we haven't heard from yet? Op open hearings? subpoenas and the ability to declassify material is right at the heart of it. What tomorrow, I believe, is going to be about is fleshing out some of the important statements that uh, Mr. Comey has now made and has written a testimony. I mean, when he talks about uh, his position almost being treated like patron patronage, that's not what public service is about. Your obligation is to the law, it's to the Constitution. It's not a patronage job the way he seems to think the president was treating it. If, the, if that patronage claim is borne out, if it's supported by the evidence, if you're able to substantiate what the director says and the Senate broadly believes him, um, if, would that be potentially construed as an, uh, grounds for impeachment against the president, that point alone? What I, what I can tell you <clears throat> with respect to that, and of course it originates in the House, I believe every member of Congress who takes an oath has an obligation to put the Constitution first. That's what I'm going to do, and that's going to be the foundation of my work going, going forward as we try to squeeze uh, the truth out of a very, very reluctant administration. Apparently, uh, the president uh, seems to think he's been vindicated by all this. I think that's just ridiculous. He, uh, there hasn't been anything that has contradicted what Mr. Comey has said in his testimony. Senator Ron Wyden, Democrat, member of the Senate Intelligence Committee. Uh, big day today, big day tomorrow, sir. Thanks for being with us tonight. Thank you. All right, we got much more ahead tonight. Stay with us. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.